can we really put our oxygen masks on first? Why the fight for a life we can call ours shouldn't have to be a struggle. One of the most difficult decisions I've ever had to make was when I left a position I fantasized everyone coveted but instinctually knew wasn't right for me. I'll spare you the saga. The only part that matters now is that I left. And when I did, I felt instantly lighter, stronger somehow. Coming down from a choice so all-consuming, I presumed whatever happened next, at the very least, would be easy. I had witnessed waves of success blossom from my courage, so naturally, I felt more myself. And because of this, I assumed I already checked the box marked hard decision on the can you advocate for yourself tick list. It never occurred to me I would be asked to survive a small death and yet another after that, over and over in what I thought was the sometimes excruciating, sometimes beautiful battle for a life I could call mine. Recently, the familiar reevaluation that preceded my previous departure started again as an almost imperceptible yet distinctly guttural whisper of a question. Is this the life you desire, Tiana? I would be lying if I said I wasn't surprised. Three years had passed. No longer was I the worried 20-something pining for everyone's approval. I had built a six-figure company with my own two hands. I had a team of smart women and champions by my side. My home life felt sturdier than ever. Everything appeared to be in order, at least on paper. Older, wiser, and strapped with more confidence, I set out again this time on a new quest to cut through the debris that somehow still managed to calcify around my desires, in hopes of making way for a more resonant path forward. I was a boxer, returning at peak fighting weight. The new me didn't think twice about leaving money on the table because certain projects didn't feel aligned. The wiser me wouldn't bat an eye when clients decided to break contracts early too. I slayed inner demon after inner demon of low self-worth and fear around everything I never anticipated having to face again. My worth apparently decided by society on the basis of my beauty and age. My relationships, romantic or otherwise. How good I was at nearly everything. Being a boss, a daughter, a friend, with money, with confrontation, in bed. I attended countless therapy sessions, wrote in my journal every morning. I had strategies that seemed ironclad at the time. So when the anxiety sunk its rabid little teeth so far into my throat, I thought I might yield purely from desperation. I doubled down and gave generously instead. Like a drip, I kept returning to Jess Glenn's lines from Ain't Got Far To Go. I wasn't scared, I fought this on my own. You pulled me down and I let you go. I told you I would prove you wrong, and now I'm here, and I'm standing strong. You want to know the sickest part of it all, though? Nothing changed, or at least very little. There were moments of temporary reprieve where I would catch a glimmer of false hope that maybe things could be different, only to plummet into yet another uncontrollable burst of depression at my desk, muffling cries so no one would hear my pain. Anxiety was one beast, but then came the doubt. And despite my most valiant efforts, I started to question if I was equipped for this particular fight in the first place. Face down in the mud, exhausted after months of the same outcome presented with only a slightly different hue, I was desperate. Everything I attempted just wasn't working anymore. I tried to remain calm and rationalize. This is only temporary. If I can get everything under control, then I will be able to breathe a little. But try as I might, what little progress I could muster simply wasn't sustaining me anymore. Something had to give. It wasn't until one random day, nearly a year after the initial whisper returned, that everything came into focus. The day wasn't special. Even now, I can't pinpoint the exact moment with any specificity. All I know is that instead of fighting, I was gently urged to reconsider. Maybe this fight feels lost from the start because it was never meant to be a fight in the first place. I am trying and failing to prove I deserve all these things I so desperately need to live my truth, space for self-exploration, freedom, abundance, joy. And even though I never thought I'd have to return to this place, here I am yet again, fighting for a life I can truly call mine. But what if the things I crave, like air, were never meant to be fought for? And what if this beckoning I find peevish and unrelenting is merely a loving reminder that to access everything I'm aching for, I need only put on my oxygen mask first. 
It's funny because it's a visual we all know intimately. If I close my eyes, I can see the flight attendants in their matching outfits giving lackluster demonstrations in perfect timing in the middle of the aisles. The concept seems almost laughable. Of course I would put on my own oxygen mask first. I don't want to die, I hypothetically sneer. But let's face it, it's easier to prioritize others and the responsibilities we believe to be worthy in the eyes of others, even while our lungs slowly start to give out. When the process unfolds in such a nuanced manner, I can't help but wonder, do we even notice we're not breathing in the first place? What I've come to realize is that sacrificing our needs, no matter how selfless and strong it may appear, will never make us feel safe or loved or justified, at least not fully. It won't help us obtain what it is we're craving any more quickly. We have to start choosing our air, our breath, our life. We need only make the decision to put on our oxygen mask first, because when we do, we demonstrate to others how they can do it for themselves too. Strapped with this clarity, I look ahead to the long road that still awaits me, even now that my own oxygen mask is firmly in place and I grimace. It will not be easy, but anything worth it rarely is. Despite the learned urge to do it differently, it is my job to ask myself, and thus ask you too, the tough questions in life so we can get to some sense of an answer that serves us. Today, I leave you with this. Can you truly put on your own oxygen mask first?